Facts are still emerging after U.S. Army Specialist Ivan Lopez allegedly opened fire on his fellow soldiers, killing three and ending his own life at Fort Hood in Texas. As the investigation continues, one of the areas they will focus on is mental health. Here now to help us understand the types of resources available to members of our armed services is psychiatrist and retired U.S. Army Brigadier General Laurie Sutton. Thanks very much for joining us, Thank Laurie. You. So, Dr. Sutton, you know this is obviously a tragedy of enormous proportions. Um, and obviously, not particularly common. Nonetheless, we do hear a lot about uh, mental illness in the armed forces, particularly you know uh, after the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. What sort of services are available to people to deal with this? What, and what, what have you done in your work? Certainly. You know, the military has made an enormous investment over the last 10 years or so since these wars started. So there are a number of mental health services that are available, it sounds like in this case. Certainly I know Fort Hood well. I know that there are, are a wide range of, of services available for soldiers. So uh, how does, it, does it, this still happen? I mean, what, what, what sort of, is, it, uh, is there a culture problem as well? I mean, do, do, do soldiers feel as if uh, they have that option? Do they take it? Well, you know, I think that, first of all, a couple of things to understand. Those who suffer from mental illnesses are not necessarily predisposed to becoming more violent. So, as you said, Absolutely. this is the vast, you know, uh, an exception, certainly. What we do know, though, is we know that war changes everyone. We know that those who come back from war have particular challenges. We also know that those who never go to war may have particular challenges. And so there are risk factors. Uh, those can include uh, soldiers who have recently moved, who have recently come back, you know, the transitions. We know soldiers who have a past history of mental illness, soldiers who've had a history of traumatic brain injury. We also know soldiers can develop uh, difficulties with relationships, substance abuse. Uh, we also know that social support is one of the most important protective factors. So I think the, um, the assumption that I will make in this case is that knowing Fort Hood as I do, that they have absolutely the right services set up to support services, support soldiers as they come back. Mm. Let's then unpack this a little bit further because I'm not sure that there is anything that anyone necessarily could have done that would have prevented what happened yesterday, I think that's this tragedy. important to remember as well. I mean, we, we can't fix everything. Is. These situations can sometimes well, emerge. And this is a post that, after all, less than five years ago, learned mm. lessons the tough way with the last tragedy right. and has put all kinds of measures in place. Right, right. Now, let me say this, that what, as a nation, we need to prepare ourselves for is we need to prepare ourselves for bringing back our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guards, and their families and to recognize that as important as clinical therapy is, we cannot treat our way out of this I mean, challenge. There is this sense that they come back, they, they put this enormous sacrifice uh, on the line, go through this very traumatic experience and they come back and they're kind of abandoned. I mean, I know that that's not necessarily what happens in terms of the military's response, but as a society, you know, what could we be doing more to, well, to, to welcome our these people back in? You know, many do thrive and many are struggling. And so I think that there are a couple of things that we absolutely can do. First of all, soldiers don't come back to the Pentagon. They don't come back to the VA. They come back to communities. Mm. As one NCO, one sergeant said, he said, you know, when I was in the Army, we always talked about unit cohesion was the center of gravity. He mm. says, now that I'm out, he says, community mm. is the civilian equivalent of right. unit cohesion. And so I think that within our communities, the partnerships that are already, you know, burgeoning in places like New York City and around the country, by the way, the community at Fort Hood, Texas, Killeen, uh, there is no better community in the Army. There is no better. If this had to happen in a community, there's no more supportive community than Killeen, Texas. It truly is the mm. great place. I will say this, the things that we can invest further in as a country have to do with investing in our understanding of the neurobiology of trauma. So right. things like integrative retreats, self-regulation skills, equine therapy, service dog wow. therapy, yoga, mindfulness, these are things that we know will help to settle back and reset the mind-body system. Interesting. Dr. Sutton, a lot of work needs to be, needs to be moved we from all of us. We will have more of uh, these conversations. Thank you very much for your time uh, you know, to dealing with this tragic story. Thank you so much. Well, thank you.